Adding new pages in WordPress is a straightforward process. Let's create a sample page and let's name it as Google Insights. We have different tabs here. We can use text editor or visual editor as well. Let's place some dummy text in there. We have options for screen options. And let's save this particular page as draft because I just want to show you what happens when we do that. Now let's grab this URL and let's open up a different browser that we are not logged in so that we can see a page that is saved as draft will not be visible. It's not published yet. As we can see, if we are not logged in, other people cannot see. But we can always preview our draft pages because we're still editing and we're logged in and draft pages will be shown to you under a different menu option under all pages let's also look at pending review let's imagine we're creating a blog post or a blog page or a normal wordpress page and we save as pending review that means if you're collaborating with other administrators who can access your site, perhaps other editors, contributors, and before you want your pages to be published, you can save as pending review so they can review it before it's published. So WordPress makes that available for you. Keep that in mind. Let's also look at visibility. We can set the visibility of the page public or we can say you know what let's password protect that page let's press ok so we simply place our password that we'd like to create a password for this page and let's now publish but that's password protected now that means if someone wants to view this page as an admin they can view it if we grab this url and open up a new tab and try to view that particular page this is what someone who is not logged in will see wordpress asking them saying this page is protected you will require a password to log in so if we grab our password place it in there and try and enter it then we can see that page that means you can set your pages to be password protected and give the password to someone else who can access it and everyone else cannot so that option is available for you you can also set a page to be private let's set it as private let's update the page and let's try to view that private page now because we're logged in we can see it and let's imagine the same scenario looking at that page if we are not logged in using a different browser let's refresh the page because it's private it won't be visible it will be shown as page not found to someone who is not logged in because it's private so those options are available for you but obviously making it public will make it available for everyone else to see that page we also have page attributes that means let's leave this let's publish this page as public and let's add a different page now completely new page and let's call this search console insights and let's grab some dummy text and let's paste it in there and now let's go and say okay this particular page the parent should be google insights because if search console related insights i'm creating a page for perhaps i may say you know what the parent of this page is whichever page that you'd like to choose as long as there is a relationship perhaps that may be ideal for you to consider now let's do this 
let's set the parent as Google Insights to see what happens to this URL portion here. Let's publish this sample page. As you can see, the URL pattern has changed because the parent is this, Google Insights. So that is reflected in the URL. That may come handy. It's to totally up to your setup. Furthermore, we have templates. Depending on the theme that you're using, you may have different templates available for you. Let's select this one here to see what happens. Let's update and let's go and view this page now. Make sense? So if you have different templates, perhaps you have three different sidebars or it's just one full page that will depend on the theme that you're using. But at the end of the day, editing pages is very simple as you now know.